everybody. So today we're going to talk about semantic search as the big payoff for this video. Semantic search meaning how to get an LM model to search Google, search within a document, etc. This is a very popular uh, request that I have. So let's dive into exactly how you do this. Up front, the very first thing is, is we need to denote a difference between sentence transformers and uh, regular encoder or decoders. And this gets kind of um, complicated just because of the, the linguistics, right? Sentence transformers as opposed to transformer models, etc. So I'll try to make this as simplistic as possible. Um, an LLM model is made up of an encoder and a decoder. Uh, when it comes to, and the encoder and the decoder is responsible for encoding tokens and decoding tokens. And a token generally refers to a um, sequence of uh, like letters that are generally like four letters long is generally a token. A token isn't necessarily translated to a word. It's shorter than a word generally, or it could be longer than a word, right? But um, a, a token is, is generally a very short sequence of information getting like four characters, and that's what a token is, right? And then the model predicts these tokens. That's what it does, right? Predicts one token after the other. Uh, but so these obviously aren't sentences. <laughs> and then so to predict a sentence as opposed to predicting a word is a different thing entirely. Uh, and then so within that, there's been this concept of sentence transformers that has been out now for a little while. Uh, I, I'm not 100% sure as to who exactly invented the sentence transformers architecture. Uh, it's mainly promoted by Hugging Face at the moment. Uh, it was created by UKP Labs, uh, and it's now maintained by Hugging Face. And then, so that's where I know it uh, primarily throughout. But so uh, they had a recent update, that version 3.2 update, that adds a lot of new features to this, which is kind of what brought it to my attention and, and what uh, made me want to make this video today. But diving into specifically how sentence transformers works from a code perspective it's very straightforward so your encoder decoder models are essentially just uh, trained encoders and decoders it's very straightforward right whereas with a sentence transformer it's an actual model so in this instance it's all mini lm l6 v2 and that's the model right uh, and then this is a BERT model a pre-trained BERT model pre-trained BERT model that's pre-trained on sentences and encoding sentences. So uh, that's there's two main differences between an encoder decoder and a sentence transformer. Number one is, is that you don't have the decoder, right? The sentence transformer is only an encoder. And the second difference is, is that you're utilizing pre-trained LLM models to do the encoding for sentence transformers. So it, while it doesn't have an encoder and a decoder, BERT obviously has an encoder and a decoder built in, right? And so that's where this gets kind of complicated within that. But all that you need to know uh, overall is, is that sentence transformers are, they do the same thing that uh, encoder decoders do for tokens, but for sentences. So the sky is blue. It will tokenize the entire sentence. I love to play soccer. It will tokenize the entire sentence, etc. Right. And, and, and that's it. And then all we need to do to uh, run this within transformers is, is just call the models. And then that's the beauty of what Hugging Face has set up within this, right? They've made it very simple to call the model. So say, for example, I want to generate a similarity score with uh, sentence transformers. That's what we're looking at here in this first example. And then so we have our sentences and some sample sentences. And then the end result is I want to know the similarity between the sky is blue and the ocean is vast and blue. And then we run the model and then that gives us a similarity score of 0.65 out of one total, right? Which means that uh, it's more similar than dissimilar, <clears throat> which would be very true, right? Uh, this is talking about the sky and that the sky is blue. And this is talking about the ocean and that the ocean is also blue. Um, and then so while they're not the exact same concept, they're similar concepts, right? And then so this is literally just mapping out. Um, if you were to graph out, let's say the sky is blue and the ocean is blue, this is where they would graph out graphically, right? It would be uh, you would have a differentiation or a similarity score of 0.65 on your graph. Uh, and that's exactly how you could utilize this data and what the data is actually for, right? And then 
You can also take it a step further. You can actually generate actual sentence embeddings. And then sentence embeddings are unique from uh, typical embeddings, right? And embeddings are what you get from like the, the like your token. And then so like a sentence tokens, basically. But what we can see, sentence tokens are different than word tokens. No matter what the sentence is, the length is always going to be the same. The embedding length will always be the same, no matter the sentence. So that's number one, right? It's going to condense it down. Uh, but then two is, is that we get this very long uh, embedding. And then so this uh, this whole entire embedding is our embedding uh, for our sentence, which is artificial intelligence is transforming the world. Artificial intelligence is transforming the world, transforms and translates into this as an embedding. So up front, noting <laughs> there is something that you'll notice within this. Uh, if you're smart and paying attention to the math, uh, this does get mathematically computationally expensive very quickly, right? We're taking, I mean, a rel relatively small sentence. Artificial intelligence is transforming the world. Five words, uh, six word sentence. Uh, and then it's uh, like 600 lines of code, <laughs> like or, or, or like 600 lines of embedding, right? So it's kind of a lot like to, to store it. Um, so it's not mathematically efficient. It's not a mathematically efficient method, but um, it does exactly what you need to do, right? Which is uh, in instances where you need to generate tokens uh, for entire sentences. Uh, this is how you do it. And then so generating tokens for entire sentences. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> and that brings us to the whole point of uh, and concept of this entire video, right? So the reason why you would want to uh, tokenize an entire sentence is that you want to uh, do a semantic search of an entire sentence rather than semantic searching an individual token and individual words. You want to do a semantic search for the oh, like whole sentence or the whole string, right? Um, like, what is the capital of France? I want to do that as a full-on semantic search. I want to search the sentence itself, not each individual token within that sentence. Uh, and then so within that, I need to tokenize the entire sentence. And then so that's where I would want to run models like this, and then where we get into this framework. And then so how exactly I do that is very straightforward. So I essentially, uh, in this instance, I load my data set and then I load my model uh, and then I load the semantic search function and the query function. Uh, and that's really straightforward, right? So then in this instance, I'm loading a bunch of documents uh, and then this is like uh, 4,500 documents uh, and then I'm loading it and I'm asking the query of how can I reset my password? It searches through all of these documents. I let it run for 15 minutes, which is why I'm not running this live. Uh, and then you can see I get a bunch of results. And then it's exactly like, like a search engine results, right? This is a semantic search. This is exactly what it's doing. It's performing like a search engine. Uh, and then so the top result that it pulls back is a document that's literally titled, how do I reset my password, reset a password. Uh, the next the next document that it pulls is, how can I change my password? Uh, and then it's the gives that top one an accuracy score of 96% and the next one down an accuracy score of 87. Uh, and then the bottom one that it goes down to is 78%, uh, which is how do you reset your Yahoo password? So pretty cool there, right? It gives us all the results that we're looking for. It did take a while in this instance. There are a lot of ways that you can quantize these models, do different things within them, right? And then so the goal, how do you put this all together? Right? Like putting this all together, very simplistically, like if you're running this in a production environment, what you do is uh, this sentence transformer, you run it alongside an LLM model flat out, right? So then you have your standard LLM model, let's say that you're running uh, Llama 3.2, you would run Llama 3.2, and then you would run this as uh, like a web search tool. So, for example, like uh, ChatGPT has example to its word web search uh, access to its web search tool. I don't know what ChatGPT's web search tool is, but it's likely something like this. It's likely a pre-trained transformer that becomes a sentence transformer that uh, uh, performs a semantic search at that. ChatGPT then accesses externally, right? ChatGPT communicates with the web search tool. And then so it'd be the same thing in this instance. If you set up your Llama 3.2 model and then your uh, sentence transformer, your Llama model would be communicating with the sentence transformer model. And then they would be communicating back and forth. It wouldn't be one glob of model, right? Or it wouldn't be 
llama performing the search. It'd be llama communicating with the sentence transformer, which performs the search, which then communicates back to the llama model. Um, and then so that's kind of just your framework and understanding exactly how that works. Uh, I'll leave a link to the description for this code so you can uh, run this and set this up yourself. It's pretty easy to set up and run sentence transformers. It's pretty easy to get them to set up semantic search to play around with it. Uh, what gets harder is doing this uh, within quick amounts of time. <laughs> like if you wanted to make a, a production ready, ready product out of this, I assume most users wouldn't want to wait 15 minutes for a query to come back. So we would have to do a lot of things to get this production ready, update the amount of compute that we're using. We would want to quantize all of this, uh, et cetera, right? So, uh, it's cool. The difference between um, development and uh, research in this instance compared to production is is like a vast chasm. I'm just pointing that out uh, uh, up front there. But uh, I'll leave a link to this. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.